Hey YouTube, this is TCA Gaming. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys some uh, stuff that I've gotten, uh, pretty good deals on eBay because of this, uh, you know, everything that's going on. And then I'm gonna show you a BGS return. It's, it's pretty sweet. I got some cool cards in it as well. So the first thing that I have is this sealed Machamp, and it is the shadowless version. I actually used the 10% off code, which if you're on my Patreon, you uh, probably saw that code. And or actually, it might have been 15%. No, I think it's 10%. Basically, it applied to any card that was into the trading card category and, um, and this was like 150 or so normally I pay about 100 bucks but they're getting harder and harder to find so I went ahead and bought this one since I wanted to use that code so it kind of worked in their favor on that one all right next up I'm going to show you guys uh, a purchase that I did receive a note with it which I haven't read yet hey Rusty my name is Clayton and I own Zeus Zoo's Toy Lab. I greatly appreciate your purchase and support for my Pokemon business. Love watching your videos on YouTube. They keep me entertained. I also own a tattoo slash piercing shop called Zoo's Body Piercing. So when I'm waiting on clients to come in, I got the iPad on YouTube. Watching your pack opening, it takes me back 20 years ago when Pokemon came out. Brings back many childhood memories and makes me happy. And keeps me happy with everything that's going on in the world currently. I just want to say I had to close my establishment down a few days ago to the, as you can see right there, and I'm waiting to be reopened in the next few weeks to months. So your purchase helped me get over these hard times and put me in a better mood, and I hope you would read this letter on your YouTube channel for everyone else going through these hard times right now. Thank you so much, and I hope you truly enjoy the card. And then there's all of his information. He said, I still have the ho -Oh when you're ready, which I actually bought the ho -Oh, and you'll see what uh, I'm talking about here. And then he signed it. So I hate that's happened, <clears throat> that you uh, had to shut everything down. It's looking like it's basically necessary at this point. Let's just hope that it gets better. By the time you guys see this video, it may be even worse than what I'm seeing right now. All right. So first I bought this. It's a Rapidash, and I paid a pretty high price for it because um, it's, a, it's a little bit special. If you look at it, it actually doesn't have the Pokemon Center New York stamp on there. These are a lot tougher to come by. You would think that the ones with the stamp would be more exclusive, but they're not. I mean, I've got bricks of those. But these, I think you could only get from the Scantastic Sealed Flyer. And with that glue on the backside, sometimes it um, actually damaged the card, so it made them hard to get a 10. So I paid $55 for that. And then he said he had the Ho-Oh as well. He had both of these listed up for 75 And so I went ahead and bought the 10 and then there was a 9 You know, I don't think this one's worth, but maybe in a 9 you know, $15 or so, maybe to me you know from what i clear i'll probably ask 20 on ebay and i you know i won't clear 20 because you've got shipping and everything else but you know for me to go ahead and get the ho and add to my collection i hadn't seen him in a while and like i said i think his price was really fair so i didn't even hassle or haggle with him i just went ahead and bought him for the price that he was asking next up we have this shadows porygon this is unlimited uh, I actually didn't buy this card individually. I bought an entire Shadowless PSA 10 set for about $3,000, and uh, the Porygon was regular unlimited, so I had to get that one replaced. But for me, that's a really good price for all. It was 87 PSA 10s, all Shadowless, non hollows Next up, we have the, we have a Gengar from Sky Ridge, and this one I got for a really, really good deal. And the reason I got it for a really, really good deal is because even though it says Gem at 10, it's actually got some damage up here on this right top hand corner. So I got this for $631, I believe that was the price. But you can see right here, it's got a little bit of a ding in the side of it, which would obviously make this not a 10. Uh, I don't know if PSA would cover it or not. They should, since it's within the case and there's no damage to the case. However, at the moment, I'm not um, I'm not really pursuing that. I'm just going to kind of set it back. I don't know if it's the best time to sell anyways. Uh, next up, we have another Espeon First Edition. You know, after I bought that one for $1,400 because I regretted not getting one for $1,000 or $1,100, and then they were all like $2,500 to $3,000, I saw one come up for $1,299. And I was like, man, that's cheaper than what I even paid. And I just put on my watch list, and the guy sent me an offer for $950. Or maybe I put in a... No, Oh, man, I can't even remember. It was a thousand bucks. I put an offer of a thousand dollars, and I paid thirty dollars for PayPal fees. So it ended up being one thousand thirty bucks that I paid for this. So that's uh, over three hundred dollars less than what I just paid for another one. And I think it's a great card to have. Next up, the last card I'm going to show you before we get to the BGS submission is this Electabuzz. Someone emailed me, said, "Hey, man, I found this on eBay. I think the dude was asking. Gosh, I don't even remember now. I think it was like twenty five, or maybe it was fifteen hundred dollars." I think it was 2500 and I was looking at the condition. I was like, you know what? I think it's overpriced. 
I put in an offer of $950, the dude accepted like instantly. So I went ahead and bought it, and it turns out it was real. Check it out, it's got the inverted stamp right there, and I don't have the Electabuzz anymore. So I'll get this one graded by BGS. <clears throat> and uh, you can see it does have some wear on the sides, and that, that bottom corner is kind of dinged up. Um, I, PSA, I would probably say it's about a five. I, I don't know what to expect from BGS, to be honest with you. Um, maybe like a seven. I think that corner would be hard to really ignore. But, you know, I've been wrong on my last two inverted cards that I've sent to them. Next up, this is actually a BGS submission for, dang, I can't remember his name. Maybe it was Cameron. But we're going to start off with an FBO card that he got. We've got a 9.5 Alakazam. Look at that. We've got 10 on the centering, 9 on the corners, and then 9.5 on the other two. So it's a pretty good 9.5. You know, the backside centering, I really wouldn't have given it a 10. But the front side centering looks great. So I guess that is really what they kind of focused on. And, you know, these are getting tougher and tougher to come by. But I'm going to set this off to the side since it's not mine. He had also bought some match prints a while back, and he got the Typhlosion, an 8.5. That's a really good grade, very solid grade. Then we also got a Mary's Impulse, another 8.5, and it was pretty close to getting to that 9. And if you look on the back side here, this is what a match print looks like. Girls. If y'all can't be nice, then you need to separate. You're not supposed to have any of them. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm seeing my daughter eat some food right now. She didn't finish her lunch. I'm not sure how she got snacks. But anyways, they're called match prints because if you look on the back here, it's kind of hard to see. You can see digital right there. This says Imation, match, and then it'll finish out match print and commercial. Uh, I guess you could call it any of that stuff. I just called it a match print because I thought that was pretty cool the way, it, um, the way it was worded. But they have square corners. They're glossy on the front. And then the back side, they have it's white and it's got like a photo paper stock. You know, the, I guess that's why it's so glossy on the front. But the barcodes on some of them actually work. All right, next up, this guy had a Charizard. This is square cut and OC. Um, BGS doesn't grade OC. You can see why it was marked down to a seven because the corners are a nine, the edges are a nine, the surface is an eight point five, and then the centering is six point five. So that's why it got dropped all the way to a seven. It's in really good shape. I would think that if they gave quali qualifiers, quantifiers, qualifiers, that um, this would probably be close to a nine. Next up, they also had the Blastoise. This one got an 8.5. The centering and corners brought it down, and I pretty much agree with the grade on that, but you can kind of see it right there. Venusaur, again, the centering brought this one down. You can see it's shifted up, so it's got a seven on that, but the other three parts of it did really well. And then the last card he graded was something pretty cool. It's a square cut, but only on two sides. These sides are rounded. You see that right there? But they're square on these two corners. And it got a nine. The surface is what brought it down, so it probably got a little bit of scratching in the hollow full or something like that. But other than that, it looks really good. So I think he'll be definitely happy with that grade. It's hard to get nines on square cuts. Okay, so next up, I'm going to show you guys some of the PSA grade or BS, BGS grades that I had. I submitted several Kangaskhan, Gyarados, Nine Tails, and Mewtwo, like I have in the past. Uh, this was the best one. I had several nines, kind of in the same um, sub with the same subs, two nines, an 8.5 and a 9.5. But it's hard to get on Kangaskhan as it is, you know, a, a nine. And you know, this is a square cut, so that's even tougher. Gyarados, we got a nine. This is quad nine. So it is exactly there. Probably would have deducted a little bit more on the surface for this particular one myself, but overall pretty good. Nine Tails, another nine. Did not get any gem mints on the Kangaskhan Gyarados or Nine Tails. This one had an 8.5 and a 9.5, the other two nines. So it averages out to exactly a nine. And then here's the Mewtwo, actually got a gem mint uh, 9.5. Had three 9.5s and one nine subgrade. So that was pretty cool to get a gem mint on a square cut. And then these two right here, I'm going to show you guys, you know, how the centering can really kill the grade on BGS's side. Um, the centering on this one was 4.5, and the corners were 7.5. I think it's because there's one ding down there, so I brought it down to 5.5. This one's a 6 with centering at 4.5. But you can see, I mean, it's shifted way out there. Next up, I'm going to show you guys uh, some more FPOs and a few cool cards that I had graded. All right, next up we got uh, Arbok. We got two of those. We got a nine on one, and then a 9.5 on this one. This one right here was shy 0.5 to get the gem in, and this one actually has a 10 subgrade in centering, so that was really nice there. Uh, I got two Ampharos. Oh, my computer's going off. 
Girls. All right, so back to this. We got a nine and a nine here. This one actually has one sub 10. So this one, I guess, would be like a nine plus. And then here we got a 9.5 on edges and 10 on centering. So this would be like maybe a nine plus plus. Really close to getting that 9.5. Probably the most expensive card in the video. We have this Pikachu, and it's the inverted one, and it got an 8.5. I was really surprised about it getting the 8.5 because, if, as I recall, it had um, quite a bit of you know whitening around the edges. You guys can kind of see that, but if I remember correctly, the surface was almost wavy. But you know what? I will definitely take the 8.5. Next up, we have a Diago G Level X 8.5. Some of you may know what the issue is here. This says faded energy symbols. It's not actually faded. Um, the, the color's off. If you look down here, uh, the fire is yellow and the psychic is purple. I think it's missing the, the red. Or what's it? You got cyan, magenta, blue, black. I mean, I, I can't even remember the names of the colors. Next up, we have a theme deck insert. This one was probably brought down because of the centering. Got the 8.5. Centering plays a huge factor at BGS on the actual grade itself. Now, these next three cards were all PSA 8 before I submitted them. I thought the grade was kind of tough, but I'm going to show you what they graded this time. So, first we have a Crystal Charizard. And before, it was a PSA 8. Now, if you look at it now, it's got centering 9.5, edges 9, surface 9.5, and corners 8.5. The reason I think this got the 8 was because of the corners. You can see, here, maybe this will make it a little easier. You can kind of see the whitening there. Some down here. So, I think it was a tough PSA 8, but, um, so, but it definitely upgraded to a 9 at BGS. I thought it was worth a shot just to see what would happen You know, if I sent it that way. Uh, I didn't want to regrade it through PSA. I just I'm trying to compare the differences, and you know if I go to sell that one, I may disclose you know what it was before. This one was also a PSA eight, and if you look at this, it actually is 0.5 away from getting a 9.5 gem mint, which is the equivalent of a PSA ten, as many people say. But really, I don't buy that. I think uh, a lot of times there's a reason people put in their title when they have 9.5s for BGS PSA ten question mark. You don't ever see the opposite PSA ten. You know, then have BGS 9.5 or BGS 10 question mark up there. But there were, I think there's one light print line. You kind of see it there. Some of those other ones I think on the outside, but there's a straight one in there. The centering is off just a little bit, but not too bad. And then the backside, the edges actually look pretty good. I would have almost expected there to be a 10 on the corners and the edges, which got 9.5 and 9.5. And then the centering, maybe... You know, nine. I can see that. And the surface maybe like an 8.5 at the lowest. You know, based on what I'm I'm used to from them. And again, this one right here was also a PSA 8, and it got a 0.5 up from the Lugia. This got the 9.5. It's the Dark Dragonite. So that's kind of cool. Three colorless types. They were all PSA 8s. And then let's look at the back side. I mean, it's not too bad. Like I said, I think this one was pretty pretty harsh at an 8. So that's why I submitted these to BGS. I don't really like to resubmit to PSA anymore to give them additional business when they regrade something unless it's just highly worth it. And in this case, I figured BGS would give them a little bit of an upgrade boost, and they did. So I'm definitely happy about that, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, thanks for watching, as always, and catch you guys around.